We'll start with opening statements, uh, then move into our witnesses. Uh, the chair did not recognize himself for an opening statement. Big government was colluding with big tech to censor Americans. That's the first thing we learned. But now it's big government colluding with big banks and big business to spy on everything Americans buy, every place they go, everything they do. Big government wants your financial data because it's full of sensitive information about you. Our investigation started when an FBI whistleblower, George Hill, came forward and talked to the committee. Mr. Hill was supervisory intelligence analyst at the FBI up in the Boston Field Office, told the committee that the FBI got information from Bank of America. Specifically, it received a list of any customer who made purchases in the Washington, D.C. area January 5th through 7th, 2021. The whistleblower's supervisor, Special Agent in Charge of the Boston Field Office, Mr. Bonavolanta, corroborated Mr. Hill's testimony when he spoke to the committee. And so did Steve Jensen, the FBI's Domestic Terrorism Operations Section Chief. But it wasn't just purchase data around a specific date that the FBI got from Bank of America. That was actually also overlaid with any firearm purchase at any time. And how did the FBI get this information? They asked for it. In fact, you can see on the, on the uh, display on the screen here the email that was sent. The FBI told Bank of America to recap our morning call. We are prepared to action immediately the following threshold customers confirmed as transacting business in Washington, D.C. between these specific dates. So if you're in Washington, D.C., visiting your kids, maybe visiting your aunt, or maybe just a friend, the FBI wanted to know about every single purchase you made. And, and if you're a gun owner, look out, you're going to the top of the list. For simply exercising your Second Amendment right, you're on the FBI's target list. And never forget, the federal government got this information without any process. No warrant, and frankly, no notification. The bank didn't tell the customer that, we're, hey, we're handing this information over to the FBI, the most powerful law enforcement agency in the world. Now, these FBI agents, Mr. Hill, Mr. Bonavolant, and Mr. Jensen, they all said this was wrong and, in fact, sent the information back to FBI headquarters in D.C. So that's how our investigation began. But since then, and we continue to investigate, but since then, we've learned that the financial surveillance was broader and there was actually a specific objective. The federal government is building profiles on the American people. And the profile isn't based on criminal conduct, it's based on political beliefs. And if you got the wrong political beliefs, well, you're potentially a domestic violent extremist. Now, how are they actually doing this? What are the mechanics of this? There's this entity we've discovered called the Domestic Security Alliance Council, kind of Orwelling in, uh, in sound and title, the DSAC. And this is an entity where the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, works with 650 of the largest companies in the world. These companies have to do over a billion dollars in revenue a year. They represent two-thirds of the gross domestic product of the United States economy. And they work through this controlled access portal. We'll put that on the screen here. What are they sharing in this secret portal? Well, we're not exactly sure because it's secret. But we do know that they share some information, share reports. And one of the reports we got called a liaison information report said this, any American who opposes, any American who opposes firearm legislation, the easing of immigration restrictions, and COVID mandates is someone banks should be watching because again, they might be an extremist. Now stop and think about that for a second. I mean, just I mean, in other words, if, if you're against gun registration, you're for a secured border, you oppose lockdowns and vaccine mandates, you're a domestic violent extremist according to the FBI and the government should get your data, should get your financial data. It actually gets worse. The federal government and banks also use what they call merchant category codes to flag Americans that shop at places like Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's. They flagged Americans who bought religious text. We can show you that one too. Because everybody knows if you want a secure border and you oppose COVID lockdowns, then you probably shop at Bass Pro Shops and you read your Bible, and of course, all that makes you an extremist. Literally, that is the logic 
that you, you see displayed from the information we've been able to gather thus far in our investigation. Now remember, these are also the same folks who just a couple years ago told us if you're a parent showing up at a school board meeting, you're a terrorist. If you're a pro-life Catholic, you're an extremist. Now, of course, if you oppose lockdowns, vaccine mandates, want a secure border, don't want gun registration, you're in that category as well. This is scary where things are headed. We've seen the censorship. Now we see what's happening with big banks and, and big government relative to your financial data. Again, all this being done with no process, no warrant, no notification to the customer that the banks are actually supposed to serve. Big government's not supposed to use big tech to censor Americans, and big government shouldn't be working with big banks to target Americans for behavior that is legal and constitutional. And that's the concern. That's why we're having this here, and we will get to our guests here in a second. But with that, I would yield to the ranking member for an opening statement before we get to our witnesses.